It's Monday, and listen, you talking about you know don't I'm not a I'm not a sports girl, but you know they call the um basketball thing March Madness, right? Do they call it that? Help me out, people. You know March Madness for the basketball. Well, honey, it's March Madness. It's March Madness. Ah, uh, they don't rated Diddy Holmes. The kids got clinked up. Justin and Christian Combs, they got clinked up. Oh, it's basketball and football too? Yeah, March Madness. It is March Madness. And then the March Madness is spilling over into the uh, 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 reality shows. Candace talking about she's not coming back. I got fired. They said Robin Dixon not coming back. She got fired. But at the eight seasons of Robin giving us nothing, not a storyline, Nothing but nonsense. They finally said enough is enough and they find her. I wonder if Juan showed up to the reunion. They finally said enough is enough. Fired. In the ground, Dawn, we find out she's a whole drunk. She needs to go to uh, rehab in, in AA meetings. Hello, I'm the ground, Dawn, and yes, I'm an alcoholic. She could have killed herself and other people. So now, what is going to become of Real Housewives of Potomac? We got Ashley. Nothing. Giselle without Robin. Tragic. The Grand Dame. Will she get locked up? Because I think this is not her first DUI. Well, she had to do some time behind the bars. They said the car smelled and reeked of alcohol, and so did she. And they had to drag her out the car and use a fire extinguisher to put the fire out. And then they were shady last night. I don't know if y'all caught it. When they was at the uh, photo shoot party or whatever you want to call it, they showed two drinks on the table, and they was done. Did y'all notice that? I said, are they being shady? They showed the two empty drinks on the table next to the Rondon. This thing is becoming so toxic. And what I hate for these ladies is you had this amazing opportunity to be on here, have some fun, make some money, and you're all toxic. My heart breaks for Giselle. Because her father died. May he rest in peace. And may Giselle find the comfort that she needs. I don't care if your father or your mother is, is 102. It's still heart-wrenching when they leave. My father's in his 80s. God knows when he go home to be with God, I, I, I listen. I'm going to pass out. That's my dude. And my mom, my mom is still alive too. My mom is late 70s. God bless her. God bless my parents. Still here. We taking my mom. My mom's birthday is on May 4th. We taking her to see the Wiz on Broadway. Here we are. We taking mom to see the Wiz. I'll show you pictures. I went to see Aladdin on Saturday, but it was a washout. It was so much rain. 
I couldn't take a picture. I was cold. It was raining, but I had a good time. It was a little chilly. I said, oh, it's cold. I couldn't take out my camera. I didn't do nothing. I was trying not to get wet because I was looking cute. Can't be cute and getting wet. No. I had to get to the theater and be dry. Your whole rain store. It was crazy. Yes, it was. So the season finale, that fight was horrific. Horrific. So we wonder why there's the, the we hear about these stories like Shanquilla. And there's another young lady. I forget her name. I hate that I'm always forgetting her name. We got this Shanquilla. We got this Mahogany Jackson. We got so many people. And you're like, how do friends beat up on other friends or unalive other friends? How? When we see grown women on reality TV fighting. That's how. I don't hang with too many people. And I don't do arguments. I walk away. Not arguing with you. And I'm not going to be reckless with my mouth. A lot of people, they have mouths. Even when the cops pulled you over, don't get mouthy. Why? Get your ticket, pay your ticket, and just keep, just move on. It's better to be alive to tell the story, to be unalive, and you feel like you won an argument. So they're in this, you know, the GNA uh, uh, fashion show event. Candace is saying something about Deborah. Deborah comes over and said, what are you talking about? Say it to my face. This is high school stuff. Grade school stuff. Somebody picking up a champagne bottle. Somebody's throwing a wine glass. Uh, I'm going to call her Kay. So I'm going to mess up her name respectfully. She gets hurt. She's holding her head. There's blood. She had to go in the, uh, the ambulance. The EMTs had to come pick her up. Cameron goes with her. And they said they all left the hospital four o'clock in the morning. Where Deborah messed up was, she doubled down the next day. And I do agree. Mia said the next day when she was sober, she got on the internet and doubled down as if she was right. What kind of ghetto mess is that? You get into a fight, you bust somebody upside the head, somebody's bleeding, somebody had to go to the hospital. You touch their face, like Kay said, the face, and you think that's cool? Never let them see you sweat. But I will say this, and y'all be going, buckle your seatbelts, buckle your seatbelts, because we're going to get down with the get down tonight. I'm going to say this. And I know some of y'all are going to be like, oh, diva, 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 diva. I'm going to say this. Candace Mouth. 12 stitches. Come on now. Y'all better tell me the facts. 12 stitches. That's insane. 12 stitches. Let me see what Lawson said. The board, diva, that's the board's version of events. They were mic'd up. And Candace and Wendy would have been talking about Deborah. They would have, they would have aired. Production never protects Candace or Wendy. Here's the thing. Forget, I hear you, Lawson. But let me say, let me say this. Forget about what we didn't hear. Let's talk about what we did hear. She kept calling that girl the help. She kept calling her Sesame Street and all kind of other names that we did hear. And I'm going to say this, two wrongs will never make a right, but you have got to stop. You have got to stop. I, I, I don't even like, to be honest with you, I don't even like to call people names over here. And you know, every now and then, you know, we may slip out, but on a regular basis, I'm not calling them names, not calling them out of their names. And she kept calling that girl Sesame Street, even in her confessional. After she knew this was a serious situation, she called her it. it. It's like, it's too immature. It's problematic. It's very immature. It's problematic. And I don't think it's right. 
What did it? What, what's going on? What's going on? Yeah, did we get any updates on Diddy? Okay. So anyway, I think it's problematic. She called her it. She called her Sesame Street. She called her the help. Yeah, no, I get freedom of speech, but come on now. We at some point we gotta grow up. When you wanna piss on your check, now I don't know for sure how much these girls get. But let's just do let's just do a common ground right now. Let's say they get 500 k a season. And somebody remind me, somebody tell me, child, how many episodes do they have to do? She called the Grover. I, I it was over the darn top. So let's pretend they get 500000 a season, and let's say they have to do 12 episodes. Matter of fact, this was episode 18. So let's just say you do 500000 a season and for 18 episodes. Where in the world do you get to make that cash like that legit for hanging out with people and just filming the show? You have got to be dumb, stupid, or both. To mess up a payday like that. You would not knock me off my square. Especially when you are extra. You ain't even a main cast member. You lost your job on an extra? You have got to be stupid. On an extra. You let an extra knock you off your square. You let an extra make you lose your half a million dollar paycheck. You ain't going to get me to, I would, there's no way. There's no way. I worked all my life. And I know how hard it is to save a dollar, get a dollar, make a dollar. And no matter what job I get. Unless you are like the CEO, the vice president, or you have some high level position at one of these jobs, in your lifetime, you ain't going to make no $500,000 and not for no 18 episodes of work. You will be slaving day and night. You have to be on call on your phone. Some disaster happened on that job. They waking you up out of your sleep. Because you tag you it to go handle it. You get the dress cute, go on vacation, have fun, and you're going to let an extra knock you off your square. I would have ignored that girl to the point where she would have really had to come up in my face. For three months of work. And then at the end, you get to go to the big party and dress up in a beautiful dress. And then you off until they start filming again. And you're going to let an extra get you caught up. Messy. Robin. She been hanging on by a thread. Hanging on by a thread for the whole eight seasons she was on there. Hanging on by a thread. Her and her husband or, or best friend or roommate or roommate with paperwork, they both dumb too. Stupid. And I really think they make more than 500000 a season. I think they're, they're up there like seven fifty or something like that. So, Robin, you making $750,000 and you talking about your tagline is you took a DNA test and you 100% don't care. Well, now they show you they don't care either. You thought all of that time that Giselle was going to be able to hold on to you, hold on to you. Well, Giselle don't got a storyline, so she ain't even holding on herself no more. So now you going and she's still there. You, just dumb. Just stupid. Mm -mm. I'm making almost seven fifty, dollars almost a, half a million to almost a million dollars. And I got to show up for 18 episodes and the camera's got to be in my face. I'm going to wake my husband up and say, let's get this money. Let's get it. 
If I know the scenes ahead of time, we're going we to be dressed to kill. We're going to give them a whole show. And if I decided to stay with you and I know you cheated, we're going to sit in front of the camera and say, you know what? We're going to do like Dr. Jackie and Curtis did. We're going to do like Dr. Simone and Cecil did. He cheated, but I'm going to forgive him. You're going to shut the party down right there. He cheated, but I'm going to forgive him. So we're moving on. But instead, you want to hide it. You want to get a nickel from behind the paywall. Girl, bye. And you done signed the lease for this Glow 30. You got the, 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 the whatever hats you got. Girl, these people don't make no sense. Then you got this show, Reasonably Shady. Listen, people were really watching it or connected to it because y'all was on the Real Housewives of Atonement. How many people are really going to be connected to this thing when you're gone? Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, I'm not paying $89 a month to listen to nobody. Especially if you ain't that interested. And listen, let me tell you, I love Tasha K. And she has some good interviews, but I'm not even paying the subscription to be on her. I got to hear about it. I'll wait till she drop it on YouTube. That's too much. I got to have my Netflix. I've been trying to watch Shirley Caesar. What, I keep calling it Shirley Caesar. Uh, what's, the, what's the darn name? I've been trying to watch that. For days now. <laughs> well, Obi, you funny. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying you're not going to knock me off my square and my money and my pocketbook and my bank account. Thank you, Savannah Shirley Chisholm. I know why Shirley, Shirley sees on the mind, but I've been trying to watch that for days. It's pretty good. It's about two hours and change, and I keep falling asleep. That's because I'm turning it on late, but I'm watching. Just trying to tell you. So you want to let somebody knock you off your square? The extra. This girl did how many episodes, Deborah? And now because of her and this fight, you ain't got a job. But you see, do you know what's interesting to me? When Deborah first came up in her face and we hear the audio, NECA, Wendy, and and Kay had to come and back Deborah out of her face. She was saying, somebody come get her out my face. But now as they're ushering Deborah out, now all these people all of a sudden got a whole Candace back and she running that mouth. Girl, be about what you're about. Knock it off. Ain't nothing worse than a person that got all that mouth when a whole bunch of people is holding them back. Let her loose. Set her free. Set her free. Come on now. Sharice and her daughter showed up to the photo shoot. And Sharice said her foot was all broke, hurt, fractured or whatever because she was being security at the, the fight, the event, whatever went down there. So her foot got hurt. And then Candace on camera talking about, did you tell my mom that I hurt your foot? Candace, come on now, shut your mouth. This is your job. Don't tell my mom. By the way, for that photo shoot party, everybody's outfit was tragic. Tragic. Candace had on this dress and the underboo showing. Tragic. Cherise's dress was so short, she got a heel on and then a boot. Girl, you got the boot on your foot. Just put on a flat shoe. You can't even walk around. You like hopping and lift. It was a mess. Tragic. What did Ashley have on? I wasn't in love with uh, Wendy's outfit. I was not in love with nobody's outfit. In the photo shoot pictures. And then Mia. See, they none of them are friends to each other. Karen said that Mia said that Rama's picture was awful. That's what Karen said Mia said. And then me and Gordon there acting like the happy family. We'll talk about it. I'm about to let the people in the building because I've been running my mouth. And, and let me say this. The last scene, because they picked the cameras back up to film Mia and Gordon. They could have left that out. They could have left that out. I got to ask, does anybody care about the kids anymore? 
Does anybody think about the kids anymore? You got Jeremiah, who now me is saying that there was some thought process that Gordon is not his father, that her boyfriend, and check this out. You want to know what's wild? Um, listen, in my opinion, yes. Am I missing something? Are you saying Candace got fired because of the war and K fight? Yeah, I, I, I'm saying yes. I'm saying yes. I'm saying yes. And then she said, and maybe they told her, because she used the word break, you may see me again. And maybe what they told her was, you got to chill for a minute. We got to put you on ice. And maybe while you're on ice, you'll grow up. And I think, you know what? At first, I was in agreement with this. But some people, maybe they do need to put them on ice. And you want to know why? Because maybe when they're missing that check in their bank account, when they do come back, they'll get it right. I want to say Sebastian, what we telling me about, they put the Real Housewives of Miami, he'll let me know when I, he comes up, on ice, but when them chicks came back, they got their life together. Maybe we got to show you what it's like when you're not getting this check. Yeah, Miami was on ice for eight years, and when they came back, they had their whole life together. So back to this me and Gordon scene. Tragic. What I couldn't understand is, like, Gordon, your self-esteem is that low that this chick allegedly cheated before you even walked down the aisle and said, I do, and you still want to get with her? I don't want to get with nobody that bad. If, no. No. Not in this age right here. No. Mm -hmm. Listen, relationships... Shout out to all of y'all that's been married and been married for years. Y'all lucky. Y'all the winners. Because the streets is messy. Yes, it is. The streets is messy. Some of these guys out here. But Gordon, was your self-esteem that low that you had to have Mia on your arms? And she claimed she came to you when the baby was in her stomach and said, I don't know who the baby belonged to. And you said, don't worry about it. I'm going to raise the baby as I own. So then shut your mouth, Gordon. You should have never came out and said now, oh, he thinks this is baby. Me and you messy when you want to play with the father of your child. It's just messy. And let me say this. Jeremiah and Juju, Juliana, they look like they could darn near be twins. So Gordon is questioning if he's the father of uh, Jeremiah, then what about Juju? What about Juliana? Because those two look like twins. And can I say this to you? Ink, Incognito, whatever his name is. Let me say this. Ain't it ironic that his name is Incognito? I will never understand why a person would be okay with sleeping with somebody else that has a whole husband and not think if my person that I say I love that I'm sleeping with, that's my soulmate, can do this to the man that she married to, what would she do to me? He was on Watch What Happens Live with Andy. I, for the first time, I turned it off. Because he's sitting in the audience with them shady sunglasses on. And Mia was telling all kind of lies that didn't make sense. I could have sworn in the kitchen. She said, well, Gordon, you knew I was with him before we got married. Then she said to Andy, but I wasn't with him before I got married. It was at, she, just lies. And he's sitting in the audience just listening. I don't talk enough, y'all. Let me bring the people in the building. Me and Stay Lion Page. But the fact that they brought the little kid into it, gut alone. Disgusting. Deplorable. Messy. He's old enough. Now this thing is documented on TV. And then, not only that, not only that, 
You was bringing the kids over there in that mess to the point where the kid was like, Daddy, why is mommy sleeping in the bed with ink? Daddy, mommy's trying to replace you with ink. I would never in my long-legged life put somebody up in my kid's face. If I slept with their dad, your dad is your dad. Whether your dad ends up being a drug addict, behind bars, whatever the case may be, that's your dad. It was what it was. It is what it is, but that is your dad. Can I get a what, y'all? I need a what? I need a choo-choo. Hold aboard, everybody. It is Monday night, and it is the Real Housewives of Potomac, season eight, episode 18, and they said an, an iconic ending. And whoa, 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 and a whoa, whoa, whoa. It was an iconic ending. So listen, guys, let me go ahead and bring the people on in the building. Hey, in my opinion. Hey, Diva. Choo-choo. Choo-choo. Hey, Savannah. Hey, Diva. Hey, Dadon. What's going on, Diva? Hey, E. Emmanuel Sebastian. Hey. Hey, everyone. Hey, everyone. And Mel. Hey, Mel. In the building. Listen, people, we in the building. Oh, I love the setup, Diva. Oh, okay, you love the setup? And we got to talk. Because this thing was a mess. We'll first go around and discuss the fight. We can also throw in there, you know, Candace not coming back and Robin not coming back. And Karen's okay. drunkenness. And Karen, you know, we'll do that last. <laughs> the grand dame, the grand dame. The and grand drunk. K got hurt. They're ushering the boy out. Candace was running her mouth. Candace need to put on me to, uh, in my opinion, talk. Hi, Diva. Uh, so, um, what I find, okay, and so I might shake the shrine here. What oh, I find, what I find in rehearsable is the fact that everybody's trying to make it okay what happened, okay. I don't care what I say out of my mouth. You never have the right. And I just want to be clear. When this fight happened, Candace was not facing her. She had her back to her. That's the reason why she dumped the drink in her hair. So I feel like it is disrespectful. And you got to be some kind of low, low down something, okay? to try to post some drinks in somebody's hair because you're not getting the attention you wanted. This girl that came on here and has tried to tear down two black women marriages and you don't play with somebody's kind of marriage. It's the right way and the wrong way to do anything. I believe my buddy the Dunn said it. Keep your hands to yourself. You can get sassy with me all you want. You can talk what you want to talk. But the minute you put your hands on me, that's going to go another way. And see, everybody know Candace is not a fighter. And so I feel like they take that it, to their advantage. And then they, everybody wants to jump on her because they know she's not a fighter. Oh, no, 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 no. While I will say Candace does have a small mouth on her, okay? Mm -hmm. I will say that, okay? It is very disrespectful sometimes. But she has never put her hands on somebody. And as a grown person, I wouldn't expect nobody to be putting their hands on me. But as you can see, the girl came dressed like she was finna be in a street fight. So she already knew what she was doing. And Ashley knew what she was doing because Ashley asked, are we done? Is the cameras down? So it let me know that it was premeditated. And I do believe, and I've watched this fight four times now, I do still believe that Ashley had something to do with it. She knew this was coming up because Ashley tries to play the dumb role. And she was standing right there with him the whole time. So you can't tell me you didn't see anything. But you were standing right there. I'm, I'm over it. Um, As far as the, the, what you call it, I believe Candace. I believe Candace left. Mm -hmm. 
Um, everybody that said they talked to the producers of the show didn't have no reason to say that they didn't. They said the producer said, yes, yeah, she left on her own. So I don't know. Like I said, I will wait because Andy, you know, he loved to run his mouth on his show. I can't wait to hear him run his mouth on this one. But that's all I got to say about that. Mm, I appreciate you. Thank you, in my opinion. Savannah, you're up. My issues are still with with um, Wendy and um, Candace, they um, allowed um, Kierna to to get jumped um, by the the PYTs um, and did not defend uh, their girl. If my girl um, gets gets swung on in a club, we getting swung on in a club. They did not um, assist or defend of Wendy's. And next to, next to, um, it was Neca, Wendy, uh, Candace, then Sharice, and it took, I believe, three or four people to surround Candace, knowing Candace wasn't going to do nothing but mouth. Um, it was all talk, um, and, and nothing. She wasn't going to going to do anything. Um, I don't know how Sharice um, ended up in the boot. I, I don't know what that's about. I went back and watched it to see where she twisted her ankle, her, her toe. I'm, I don't know uh, how she ended up in a boot. Um, but it, I, we all know that Candace well, isn't a fighter, wasn't going to fight. But for none of them to come in and assist Kierna and for Kierna to end up with 11 stitches, that that really upset me. And for Wendy to go in that um, in the um, in the restroom and with all that the where is she all that hype and knowing you didn't do nothing you're standing right there didn't assist to break up the fight even when karen was on the floor two women were on her and you didn't assist her to to even get the women off of her um uh, uh, neca did that pissed me off that they they allowed karen to get jumped um that shows me that they these women uh, I just want the show to go away for a while. Just go away. I, I just need more women to leave. I, I'm sick of this show. Um, it, it's poor representation. I'm, I'm, I was hoping Wendy leaves next. I'm done with her. I, I, oh, and this blonde wig. It, we'll get to it. But just, oh, we. I'm done with them. I'm sick of them. Girl, I agree with you. Come on now, Savannah. Um, the Don, you're up. I have decided I'm not coming back this year. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to take a moment. I'm not coming back this year. That's not Candace. That's Candy. Mm. They made the same statement. Come on now. You come. I'm sitting up. Come on and, now. And Candy wasn't fired. Mm. So let's let's uh, you know, I I want to hear like in my opinion said. I want to hear what Andy says, because when Marlo made her statement, Andy backed Marlo up. When Candy made her statement, Andy backed uh, Candy up. So I want to hear what he says about uh, Candace. Um, I want to make this very clear. If the line is we are not to say anything snarky, funny maybe below the belt uh about anyone what they have on their appearance then everybody on this panel deserves to get popped deserves to get whooped deserves to get dragged <laughs> deserves to get banked <laughs> at any random time because we have all said something out our mouths twisted sideways half ass not the help, not you, Elmo, not you, the cookie monster. I, 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 I'm gonna let you finish, but I, I'm not getting, I'm not subscribing that and getting down with but, that. But, but we have, we have all said something that another person could have taken as too far. We may not have felt that it was too far, but another person could have taken it was too far. Mm. The standard about cookie monster, the help all of this 
Yes, it was low. But your husband flirting with me at the bar. Your Speak husband went to, your husband went to Amen. my hotel room and did and made me feel uncomfortable. Your husband had a mistress, that's why you got your body done. The 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 line is always the, the line just just bothers me. It baffles me all the time. The Elmo is the line is the standard. That's the mouth drop. That's the jaw drop. Elmo. But all these other things are passable. That 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 bothers me. And you know, I, I just I, I shake my head to it literally physically because we seem to forget the things that other people say on this show that affects people's real lives. Not making a nasty, dirty, low down joke, but just being a, a nasty, dirty, low down person mm -hmm. because you are low down on the inside you have nothing going for you so my joke may be low but you're low mm. all of it is all of it candace says some some things out her mouth that are boy but i can't say anything because i listen we called it jonah Mm. Back in my day, we called it Joan, and we have Joan even worse than that. As adults, me and my brothers go in, me and my homeboys go in. Yeah, I guess I come from a different, uh, a different. We, we, we oh. go in on each other, but if they are jokes, now maybe everybody can't take it. And yes, yeah, she said it maliciously, she says things ma maliciously. But other people say things, and we just, we, it just passes over like a nice cloud on a sunny day. I, I, I just, I, I don't get it. I don't get the, the standard that we, we let pass on this show. Mm -hmm. Um, When it comes to this fight, Ashley knew that this woman came in with an agenda. And for everyone who's saying she didn't know, she didn't know, Ashley told three different versions of what happened on this, la this latest episode. She told three different versions. She didn't know that someone had this video. Someone took this video and put it out to TMZ. Because when the video came out, her statement changed. When she did her one-on-one, -on -one, her sit-down, her statement changed. That's when the video came out. But while they were still recording, the video hadn't posted, and she was still back in Deborah, listening to everything this woman said. It is This woman is a proven liar on video. A proven liar. Why are you still believing everything that she says? And you were right there. She was right there there and Giselle's friend Kyle needs to shut the hell up he needs to go somewhere and sit down and cut some grass <sighs> uh Kalana uh, whatever her name is she you know she her getting hurt was horrible I wish she would have never gotten hurt she should have never you know been in the midst of that but when you toss a drink on somebody, let me say this. Me saying your mama and you throwing a glass, only one can get you arrested. And that's it right now for, for now. I appreciate you. Let me hey, focus. Yeah, let, let me let me throw this out there, right? So, of course, we see y'all, and it's fine here. We got to agree to disagree. But I want to say this. If I lost my $500 or $750,000 check, who really won? 
So, so we could say here, if I was already spoken to and I already know that clearly they told me after the Monique thing, they said my mouth was problematic. So I guess I know a lot of people, they deal was right, was wrong. I live in a world where I already know that right and wrong, it don't rule the world. Because if that was the case, there'd be a whole lot of black men that wouldn't be in jail right now. I know how the world runs. I know how corporate run. I know how work runs. So you could do what they do if you want and think you're not going to get in trouble, but you'll mess around and find out. So I'm not removed from the fact of, oh, did they do things wrong? Did they did this, that, that, and the other? For eight seasons, they've been doing things wrong, but you see they didn't move till now. Finally, Robin allegedly gets fired, let go. Whichever way we want to do the situation, whatever, you're not coming back to the show. If you want to say you left on your own, got fired, whatever. Do I think that they did the same thing to Candy as they did to Nene? They probably lessened her episodes and they played something around because she later on came back and said the contract wasn't right. The housewives way of them telling that they're gone is to say, I decided to take a break, AKA contract wasn't right. They didn't give me what I was fired, whatever. So we can, we could package it up. Like she wanted to leave on her own. All right, we could package it up like that. I really don't care. But I know the way I see it, and I'm going to stick to that. Her contract wasn't right. They asked her, they told her to take a break or something like that. But that's in my mind, and I'll be on the train alone. But I will say this. You know where you stand in this group. You know how it goes down. And there are plenty of people that got in a whole lot of trouble causing their mouth. And let me tell you this. I did a real life story. This is not Diva making it up. I did a real life story to train the other day on the train in New York City. This man started the whole fight with just his words. With his words. With his words, Sebastian. With his words. The man got up. So if it's not about words, the man got up out of his seat because of words. And these two start the sparring or whatever the case may be. Long story short, they looking for the girlfriend because the girlfriend got into the situation too. Okay. They looking for the girlfriend. And the man, he the only reason why he didn't get charged, they claim in self-defense, but they're claiming that at the moment. But I think when it's all said and done, because he put three pow pals in this man, and how can a man be down and you still claim in self-defense? I don't know how that's going to go down. But I know a lot of people that they behind bars right now because of their mouth. So we can say the line keep moving, this, that, that, and the other. I don't understand how grown folk going to let their job become in jeopardy because they can't shut their mouth. At some point, you got to know it's not a joke. You would still, listen, you sit in there, y'all can stick with that. I don't, it don't really make me know, never mind, Candace didn't get fired. If y'all want to tell me that for 18 episodes, you can get $500,000 to $700,000. She said, out of her own mouth, Candace said she had to pay for her music tour. And somebody asked me, Has I been watching? have I been watching from season one? Yes, I have. Not only do I watch, I pay close attention. Candace said out of her own mouth, she paid for her tour. But now all of a sudden... Without the show money, she going to have money to tour because of these little shows that she's doing. You got actresses that have been doing this thing for a whole hot minute. Taraji P. Henson saying she ain't getting paid. And now you're trying to tell me Candace is going to go out there and get paid off her acting and still be able to pay for a tour. Like, like okay, the, okay I'll, I'll move on. Listen, I know how to do math. And I know what this check means to these ladies. And I know that that check changes their lives. And I also know that they're not going to give up that check if they don't have to. That's Diva speaking. And nobody don't have to live on this train with me. Carry you up.
Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That fight was tragic. Um, I, I play some blame on Ashley and on production. And it just baffles me that people sit and pretend like if someone said that about their husband, like you're just supposed to let that roll off your back. Accuse your husband. In this climate that we're in, we're still in the Me Too climate, that your husband came on to me. No, I'm not going to be nice to you. Ever. To Giselle, from Giselle to what she said, we know she lied. Because she put, what, 20 on 10? And her husband lost work behind that comment that she made. Then DeBoer lied on Eddie. Like, why was she even still on the sh coming on the show as a friend of? Even after she made those comments, she was still talking slick on social media. And it wasn't Wendy and NECA's fault that like, I don't know if anybody ever been in, in the midst of a brawl. Like, things happen so fast. I don't, I, I wouldn't put that on them that they didn't stick up for her. It, that was insane. And then Giselle walking in with security for what? And I think she wanted, she wanted it to be, Candace that got beat up like she was like yeah her mouth her mouth and then her friend like the Don said jumping in I take issue when when our men they're okay with us being harmed because he said out of his mouth and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong Candace should be okay with the consequences or whatever when well, he didn't even know what happened but why are you okay with someone being harmed? Either either way, it went. I, I don't understand it. I, I do not understand these fights. I don't, and it seems like it's just on our shows. I, I do not understand that. And the fact that she did double down, asking her, did you enjoy your ride to the in the ambulance or something like that? That is so, that is trash. And the network should press charges, even if I, I can't even think of the girl name, even if she doesn't press charges, which I hope she does. This is crazy. I'm, I'm not watching this show. I'm over it. I'm over it. Yeah, it, it, that, that was crazy. Like, that was so sad. Like their own Zeus network or something. That is crazy. I agree with you. See, see, and again, Carrie, when I to everybody, when I say something, it's my own thoughts and nothing against you, but the conversation. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I get it. You I know. Say this. But <laughs> I say this. Me as a grown person, I, I don't give there, there's been stuff people said about me, and I ain't say a word. And I know for fact, for fact what they said about me. Some of it people have sent me the recordings. I got facts. You ain't gonna block, you ain't gonna knock me off my square. I ain't gonna come up here and act a fool over what you said. That's on you. But even outside of YouTube, there has been some things, and I'm not gonna mention it, but if I did, you could look it up and see that as facts that people have done. And I let it roll off my back. One thing I learned at this age right here, you're going to reap what you sow. And God said, let vengeance be mine. I ain't got to do no work and you're going to come and, and what's coming to you is going to come to you. And I'm not moving the line. All of these ladies are reckless. But if I'm working a job and I clearly know that the favorites are, in my opinion, Savannah and Dadon. 
I clearly know that. It's written in stone that they the favorites. I'm not going to sit there and cry about it. I'm not going to sit there and say it ain't fair. Life ain't fair. My father worked the same job for over 50 something years. And my father is the one that told me how to get along at work, do work and whatever the case may be. And that's a whole nother story for another day. But when I tell you I followed his mindset when I go to work, I never get fired for no job. Every job I left, I could go back to. And for main jobs, I worked the two main jobs my whole life. And yeah, was there unfairness? Heck yeah, there was. But you're not going to knock me off my square. You're not going to make me miss my bag because you're the one acting a fool. Not going to do it. So when we try to look for fairness and say it ain't right, well, life ain't right and it ain't never going to be fair. And it definitely ain't never fair if you look like me. Never going to be fair. But the thing is awareness. You know that life ain't fair. So now how do you deal with that? That's when you rise above. That's when you're using your brain. That's when you're getting it together. You already know life ain't fair. I know I cannot go out in the street and speed. Well, then they pull me over. I'm probably darn sure going to get a ticket. I can cry all the time. Well, it ain't right. They didn't get a ticket. This one didn't get a ticket. So you already know the Bora came there on one. You already know she messy. You already know it is what it is. And my thing is, there's always cameras there and there's always production and there's always security. And I would have been like, security, y'all fix this, do this, because I'm not doing this with this girl. She ain't even no regular cast member. But that's me. And if I had a girlfriend that was on one of these shows or that was doing this, I would holler at my, I bought my boo. Girl, girl, boo, don't let her let you use your check. When you see her, you ignore her. You don't say nothing. You don't do nothing. You move and you know that the cameras are there and they always got security there and you get with security. I would have walked over to security. You're not going to, you know, my, my brother said, just because they put the cars on the table, you don't got to pick them up. I ain't picking no, no cars from no side chick, from no extra who's not no regular cast member. But Diva, that's what literally happened. She was ignoring her the entire time. Did and you she, see the actual whole video, the Don from? Yes, somebody? I I, wa I watched it, and I watched it in time with with the show, how the show cut off with the mics, and then I watched the TMZ video. Candace was saying slick stuff about her the entire time, but she wasn't saying it to her. Deborah got upset. And came over to Candace. Candace had her back. She was, they were like talking in their group, and Deborah was talking See, so in her hold group. On, let me let me say something right there to Don. See, that's the part where I'm telling you I wouldn't have even been doing that. Yeah, now I, I agree know, with you on if that. If you know somebody mm -hmm. is coming in, and they a whole gangster, just like you wouldn't catch me saying nothing about Diddy. I already know the man's sinister. Why would I go there? Right? They say with this little Rodney with Diddy, Diddy, he was harassing the little girl, the daughter. He don't care. So if I already know somebody not stable, I already know they're coming here to be on one. I already know Ashley is messy. I already know all these girls don't like me. At what point do you not use the information that you have and utilize it to your benefit? You coming out your mouth. Yeah, you're going to incite the girl. So then what do you think is going to happen when you're inciting somebody? And everybody can say all day long, well, it ain't right just because of words. Well, you already know that words trigger people. We're not stupid. We're whole adults here. You know that words trigger people. So you're going to trigger the person for what? And then at the end of the day, what happens? Now somebody got hurt. It's a whole hot mess. The girl got 12 stitches and for what? 
My question is, I wonder if Deborah knew that she was going to be triggered. That's the question I have. Did she go there feeling like she was going to be triggered? She had to be responsible for that, I feel. I, I, I hear what you're saying about Candace, but also on Deborah's part, did you did you know that you weren't strong enough, Miss Deborah, to go into this event knowing that this woman hurt you so deeply? Now, I'm going to laugh at that. She hurt you so deeply that a whole year later, you're still holding on to it, that if she could say anything that was in the Candace you know, what she ain't Candace there already, did. like Mia said, Mel. She and I gotta go in order. I'm gonna go to Sebastian. Okay. Yes, please, she yes, yes. came there on ready. Yeah. And she came there on ready because yes, she was hurt from all the online stuff. You know, there are people that truly unalive themselves because of stuff that happens online. So online, she's being called a Muppet, Sesame Street, this, that, and the other. She was waiting to see Candace. And her only opportunity to see Candace was going to be at this party. And Ashley knew it. And Ashley has a part in this. Sebastian, you're up. You know, I find it interesting. People are saying these things about Deborah with the whole saying Eddie was saying stuff, but hey, Eddie hold on, hold on, Sebastian, because this this right here would, would bugs me sometimes. Oh, okay. Let's right. be clear, y'all. I'm not being ridiculous here. I'm not being silly. I'm not being stupid. I'm not misunderstanding. I'm connecting to y'all. Nobody's saying what Deborah did is justified. That Let's part. be clear. Who's saying that? Where did y'all hear me say that? I never said this girl was justified. The only person we can ever control in life is ourselves. So what I'm saying is, and I'm being very clear here, I'm going to I'm going to be in control of me. I'm telling you, if it was me, no one's knocking me off my square. Every day and every day work. There are people who will say stuff. There are people who will trigger you. How are you going to handle it? I'm telling you, I have learned as a black girl being in the corporate world my whole life that you're going to get these people and you're going to get these people that's going to try to move you and trigger you with words. I have seen ton of people lose it because of somebody's words and they have lost their whole job, their insurance, their livelihood, their 401k, their pension, their everything. Because you're going to let somebody in their mouth take you off your square? No, honey. I will sit there and you can run your mouth all day long. You're not going to catch me. Not when it comes to my money. Not when it comes to my pocketbook. I don't care what you say. Where I work, I'm not going to get in nobody's face when we at a bar and people are drinking, drinking and people sometimes don't mix. So let me just be very clear here. We got to have a discussion and I'm just saying, let's keep it real. Let's relate this thing to real life. No way in this world am I saying what Deborah did was right. That is insanity. That's insanity. Never said that. Yeah, in real world, we can say all the time, words don't matter. But there are people, there are couples that get into whole bras, whole bras because of words. There are couples in their homes smacking each other up. You call me a what? You call me a what? It's all DV. And all kind of stuff over words. So what I'm saying is that just like they said, you know, abuse can be physical or mental is no different. And all I'm saying is you keep, you call this girl to help. You said it, you said that, you said whatever, you said whatever. It matters what's coming out of your mouth. And if your job told you, um, so bye, Ellie, if I make no sense, you, you're gone, Van, you and your comments. Um, if you got, you got the, your job telling you, because essentially this is their job. They already blamed her for the whole Monique thing. Mm. All said it was her mouth. This is your job. All I'm saying is take heed. Go ahead, Sebastian. So I'm very glad we're finally up to me. I'm so glad. Okay. We're going to get into this. 
So what I saw last night was basically a fight, a fight, a fight that happened a couple years ago. We saw a fight similar to this again, and it's becoming more and more common. And almost the same person who has always been the common denominator in said fight is Candace Dillard Bassett. Candace has always been the common denominator, has not, not for all fights, but almost all of them. I could probably name five consecutively that Candace has been part of. Um, people want to say Ashley is to blame for this whole thing. No, she's not. No, I don't think Ashley's to blame at all. Ashley has every right to invite Deborah. Her children are friends with Deborah's kids. This is her new entrepreneurial venture. Ashley invited her mother. She invited all her young friends, the pretty young things. She invited her Allegedly. Aunt. Well, she did. She invited her mother. She invited her uncle, her uncle's wife. This was something, an event special to Ashley. And Deborah was a friend of Ashley's. Regardless of her and Candace's relationship, she has every right to invite Deborah, in my opinion. She has every right. Do I think that Deborah approaching Candace was wrong? Absolutely, it was wrong. But I'm not Deborah. I'm not someone who I'm civilized. I, w- I really wouldn't care about what Candace is saying and mumbling. But mind you, we do not live in a civilized society. Not everyone has the mindset of keep your hands to yourself. Not everyone has the mindset that we fight words with words. Not everyone has that mindset. And Candace hasn't learned that yet. Candace not, has not learned that certain words are hurtful. And with, with, with you saying those said words, you can get attacked. You can get harmed. And what we saw was basically Candace, allegedly Candace and Wendy were saying some comments. And Deborah heard those comments and she went up to Candace and said, Candace, do you have something to say to me? Can you say it to my face? And then some people are gonna say, Well, we didn't hear the mic, we didn't hear anything on their mics. Their mics were still on. It's not that difficult for you to move the you mic. You forgot to the throw, that she threw a drink in her hair. Well, no, 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 no. I'm still talking on this. This happened way before the drink. He's happened. getting there. This happened before the drink. It's not difficult to move the mics. It's not difficult for you to go to Wendy's ear, or it's not its not that difficult. And then when Deborah came up to Candace and was like, do you have something to say to me? And all that, Kiana's like, not here, not in this moment, not hold, holding her hand, holding Deborah's hands, not in this moment. And then Candace's like, get the help away from me. Get her away from me, get the help away from me. That is reminding me of the moment that Candace did with Mia when Mia first came on the show, when she was like, go get your pimp, go get your pimp, go get your pimp, and threw those little, what, two two leaves from the salad on her, and then Mia did that whole, that salad throw was iconic. It, she she picked up a good bunch and, and just threw it at Candace. Candace hasn't had actual basic fundamentals on how to use words. I understand people always want to say reads, 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 but the thing is y'all all all want to protect Candace, but these are the same ones who want to drag Kenya more when she uses her words. These are the same ones who want to drag Kenya more when she uses her words. Yes, and they are reckless. My thing is, till Candace learns that her words can be reckless, she shouldn't be on the show. Point blank and period. This woman, this girl, actually, I'm not going to call her a woman because that's disrespectful to women to put Candace in that category because women have respect. Candace doesn't. This girl has made fun of Ashley's miscarriage, Miscarriage has come after Mo- the paternity of Monique's child, has called Ashley wide, has told, has made a very horrible analogy when she said, get, get your breast milk as if breast milk is a bad thing. She's reckless, and it clearly shows if you can defend someone like this, the type of person that you truly are. Candace is not the type of girl anyone, even the ones who defend her, would want as a friend, in my opinion. That's how I believe. I don't think anyone here who defends Candace would want Candace as a friend because they know she's lethal with those words.
Deborah was wrong. She was looking for trouble. Absolutely. Deborah went to that party with preconceived notions. But to blame it on Ashley and to say that Ashley is at fault for the actions of her friends is completely wrong. And Wendy, the one who's saying that, oh, she made lies about her husband. Well, Wendy, we saw you hug Deborah when she came. We saw you hugged her. I don't want to hear this nonsense as if Ashley's the one to blame. No, Candace needs to learn how to use her words. Yes, this is Ashley's friend, but you are not responsible for other people's actions. If we went to the police station and they were going to determine fault, Ashley was not going to have no fault in Deborah's actions. Come on now. I'm going to need some people to grow up. I'm done, Diva. I appreciate you. Thank you. Ooh, that's oh, why, you know what, in a lot of ways, uh, 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 to everybody, that's why I'm over, like, almost recapping these shows, because it gets it gives me a headache, because it's just like, you know, my thought process is different, and just the back and forth is just so annoying sometimes. Emmanuel, you're up. Uh, Diva, you need to have you a Dr. Heavenly cup on the side. Uh, oh, what, what she drinks? Yeah, you need to have that on the side. Yeah, in the you know, I don't drink. I don't drink. I, so I, I, so <laughs> I got some non alcoholic wine. I got to um, uh, double up on my caffeine, which I'm supposed to be getting <laughs> off of. But you ain't lying, right? Um, just like Diva said, this is your job. So if you have someone that doesn't work at the job and you know it's triggered by a co worker, you don't have the right to bring trouble to your job. That's why they all talk to her at the end, at the, at the uh, photo shoot. They brought Ashley over because at the end of the day, I get what Karen was trying to say. You know, it's one thing when we have our arguments, but you brought a whole outsider in this group and you didn't protect us. And that outsider got somebody hurt and started a whole lot of trouble. Emmanuel, you're up. Okay, so this fight, um, listen, Candace is a problem and I have liked Candace, um, but she crosses the line every time, time and time again. Mm -hmm. She's verbally terrorized these girls, Ashley, Monique, and even Mia. Now, if you're going to be tough and say that you stand on business, then stand on business. If you're going to be talking about Deborah, not just online, but at the event, as Deborah claims, then you got to back it up. You can't be talking crap. And then when someone confronts you to your face, you want to be mute and say, get the help away from me. But then once the fight happened, and they were getting Deborah out. Then she gets the courage, like the lion from the Wizard of Oz. And then she's able to say, oh, well, you're a ghetto, hood rat, cockroach, rodent. All that stuff that, you know, that's really interesting that she is able to speak once people are there. Now, the Don made a great point. He said, Deborah did this. She lied about this. She lied about that. But I feel like that's what Candace should have said to Deborah, Because... Candace is 37 years old. She needs to grow up. She had two options that night. One was to walk away, or the other one was to say, you know what? Yes, I called you this, and this is why. So I do think that she was put on pause. It's like Lisa Vanderpump said, no one leaves the show voluntarily. It's way too much money. And I think oh, that her come on, Emmanuel. She yeah. said it. Talk. Talk. And Talk. If, and, and if you remember, Diva, in that book that they wrote about the housewives, they talked about how they give them these opportunities to say, oh, I'm stepping away. 100%. But there's been absolutely, there's been probably been like one or two who have voluntarily, willingly walked away. Because mm -hmm. I don't think that her singing at this time is going to give her the same money as the show did. Wait. So I am going to miss her, but she insulted her way out of the job. Another reason why I think that Candace probably was let go is because I want you to remember that Giselle said at the beginning of the season that she received D threats because of Candace. Who cares? Oh, well, listen, that's something serious. And if I'm in, if I'm in my job and I'm receiving D, D threats because of somebody else, I wouldn't want them there either. So, Goodbye, Candace. Words are weapons. They say words actually hurt more than being hit physically. Um, I'm sure Wendy's going to leave soon because who's going to who's she going to talk to? As far as Kriana, yeah, she got twelve stitches and whatnot, but I do not feel bad for her at all. Kriana threw that first punch, 
and she got into something that had nothing to do with her. And um, Diva, I sent you something mm -hmm. on your email. If you could pull it up, if, if not, it's okay. But I kind of want to um, make a point mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. what happened because I know people have like selective outrage, but I didn't know they had selective sight nowadays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> selective hearing. Selective hearing, selective <laughs> I need these two to go right back to Hogwarts. What is going on here? <laughs> oh, God. Okay, you talking about the pictures? Yes. Because I want people to... See, okay, this is... Let me... This is how the fight happened. The first thing that happened was that Deborah had that glass and she threw the liquid that was in there to Candace, who was turned away. She was dancing, but she threw that liquid. Okay, then the second picture... Okay, let me see if I could go to it. Hold on. Number two, Kriana takes it upon herself to then punch Deborah. You see that? Because Wendy was in the middle. So if anything, Wendy would have gotten splashed, not Kriana. So Kriana then hits Deborah. And then in the last picture, that's where Deborah then hits Kriana back with the glass which is why she was bleeding and then that's how the fight ensued and then the pretty young things got involved so i just want to show this because everybody's talking about keep your hands to yourself we all should be saying that to kriana as well i and just you 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 made it better for let me not say better but candace was sitting there doing the tussie roll and back you, turned to the lady and she let me shut up. And then y'all said that they gonna still defend it though. That's what I'm saying. They're gonna defend them. Right. Was Candace because you just said Emmanuel Candace was dancing. So was she dancing or was she talking ish? Because she was dancing and minding her own business, then she wasn't talking ish about Deborah. So Deborah really did that because the B want attention. No, but I'm not justifying no no no, but I'm not justifying Deborah throwing the drink. I'm just saying that Anyways, your little the pictures punch. prove our point, but okay. <laughs> you didn't get what I was trying to say, but it's good. Love no. you. We just stay on the train by ourselves, Emmanuel. Eat your up. Okay, so this is my thing. If Deborah is talking to Candace and Deborah is asking her questions, um, and you could tell by her tone of voice, this was it, this was a serious conversation. This wasn't for any camera time. She waited until the cameras were down to have a real conversation with you. Like, what's up? Why would Candace keep her back turned or not engage with her knowing that, okay, this person has been waiting to get a hold of you? To me, that's dumb. Because on the mic, we heard Candace say, oh, somebody get her. No, you get her. And look at me when I'm talking to you. I am not giving Candace any credit for never putting her hands on anybody because the words Candace has said about other people and two people have been just as traumatic and hurtful just as just if she had put her hands on someone physically. Candace yeah. uses her mouth as a weapon and other people use their hands as a weapon. So during combat, you choose your weapon wisely or you retreat, cease fire. I have no problem with Deborah talking trash online because that's what these reality people do on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube after something happens on camera that they weren't really proud of. They talk trash. Uh, Candace has done it numerous times. Nene has done it. I don't have no problem with it because that's just the name of the game. Now, on to Candace and Wendy when they brought Karina on the show. And I, I just... I for the life of me and i know we've been talking about it for the past few episodes how did this girl get here and how weird it was that they just plopped her into this confessional i believe it was because she was hurt that they had to mitigate their loss in some way and she signed off on it but in the words of mama d uh candace and wendy in my opinion left karina for dead Candace and Wendy are users, they're biased, and are always looking for a moment. Karina was sitting in that bathroom, bleeding. And Wendy came storming in the bathroom like she was in Benghazi. And she was just yelling, uh, Deborah threw a drink on Candace. Forget Candace, 
Karina is standing there or sitting there holding the whole bounty roll of paper towels over her forehead because she was cut with glass and she is bleeding and Wendy didn't give a damn. Wendy is still talking about Candace. Well, she threw a glass on Candace. She threw a glass on Candace. That was absolutely minuscule at that point. That didn't matter. Wendy came in on 10 and in my opinion, from what I saw, she was exasperating the situation, which I don't know why she was so hype in the first place because from the pictures Emmanuel just uh, showed us if Wendy was really about that life and she was that upset, why didn't Wendy say something to Deborah when she was standing right there? Wendy was doing too much and it Come was on, aggravating e. to me. Now, I do believe that Ashley was genuinely taken aback because when she was going to the production and she was saying what happened, I, I, call me crazy. I do believe that that was authentic and mm -hmm. I, I don't believe that Ashley thought they would come to physical blows. I believe she thought they would get into it and have a verbal sparring match. But to be brawling on the floor and, and glasses throwing and people cutting, no, I, I, I don't think so. I also feel that Candace was genuinely upset because this is now the second or third time she was about to get stomped out the frame. And mm. last, I do believe that Karen was upset. She is of a particular age. And I do believe, like you said, Diva, uh, when Karen was like, oh, we need to be careful about who we let come into the circle because this is a, a liability for anybody to penetrate and F one of us up. Now, even though Karen has jumped up at Carice, uh, not Carice, Sharice, a.k.a. Cora Simmons, several times on the cast trips and both of them have acted like they wanted to fight, but I get what you're saying. Um, Karen was the only one who rode with uh, Karina to the hospital in the back of the ambulance and offered to call her mom and let her know where she was. So I believe Karen's shock and disappointment was genuine. But as it relates to Wendy, I think Wendy just wanted to be in the scene and she just wanted something to say. And I'll conclude with this. Karina, I ain't got no sympathy for you because you were in the front row to fight somebody else's battle and the person whose battle you were fighting didn't even ride with you in the ambulance and like i said earlier wendy totally dismissed karina's injuries like yesterday's paper so let this be a lesson let this be your last 12 stitches mind your business girl and i also agree with giselle's friend kyle or whatever his name is. Yes. If Candace can dish it, she needs to be able to take it. And as for Wendy repeating over and over, your friend came in with an agenda. Well, uh, Osefo, one plus one is two. When you talk trash about people on TV, the next time you see them, they probably will have a, a, an agenda to confront you. That's the name of the game. Isn't this what they do every year? Uh, they wrap filming in August and then film the reunion in March, six months later, to come back and sit in a circle and argue and scream about the same old stuff from nine months ago. That's an agenda. Almost everybody has an agenda. The only uh, two people who didn't have an agenda was the one with the 12 stitches and the one who grabbed the uh, champagne bottle like she was going to bust a grape, but she was still walking around the club with both her shoes still on. So miss me. Come on, E. I mean, I'm trying to tell you, E. Amen to that. Amen to that. And maybe we connected in a different way, but you definitely connected with my energy and what I was trying to say. Come on now, Shan, you're up. Let's be clear. Candace didn't lose a check, okay? She walked away. She walked away from a toxic situation. The thing is, what y'all don't understand, not y'all on the panel, like people in the world, Candace come from money. She come from a line of doctors. Candace don't need to do all the extra that the other girls do to stay relevant. <laughs> she don't. She don't need to be these other heifers. She could just be herself, and that's what she is, and she does it well. And if you can't take my mouth, ho, walk away. Like, move. Get out the way. Walk away. This is the thing. You can't fight verbal with physical and then justify it. Candace is lethal with her mouth. So what? They come for her all the time. Like LaDon just reminded us of. You can't take the heat? Get out the kitchen, okay? And we're not going to start justifying verbal with physical that could really, really harm you. Yes, words can hurt, but let's not forget all the things that Deborah did to Candace. How Chris lost his job. All the things. Y'all remember all the things, okay? 
Hold, hold on, Shannon. I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to let you finish. Hold on, Shannon. Sharon, I'm wrong with a whole 401k, a savings account. Ain't nobody ever knocked me off my square when it came to my job and me making my money. So I'll stay in my corner and be wrong. Ain't nobody ever put their hands on me and I ain't never put my hands on nobody else. Because I know how to control my mouth, work my mouth, and do what I do. And I know when to speak up. I know when to hold them. I know when to fold them. I know when to walk away. And sometimes you simply got to run. So, yeah, I'll be wrong. But, and I'll tell you this, though, too. There ain't no friend of mine. I promise you this with everything I love. There's no friend of mine that I ever let down the wrong road. You will have some people. You will have some people that. They'll tell you, oh, leave your leave your man. And they's laying in the bed next to their good man, okay, or no good man. You will have some people tell you the lies. You will have people tell you stuff to do that they would never do. When you come to Diva, I'm going to tell you straight up and down, this is what I would do. This is what I wouldn't do. And I will block my friends every time, especially if I care about you, for what I think is having you go down the wrong road. Play with your job if you want to. Play with these people if you want to. People are unstable these days. And she's lucky it was a set with cameras and everything else. Not for nothing. Let that girl see you in the street with no cameras. Then what you going to do? That part. She was gonna do nothing. Deborah wants attention. She wants some camera time. That's all that was. Well, she Again, did I, something, and the cameras were down, and they picked them right back up. Let me tell you something, okay? Ashley is the problem, and I get, oh, oh. you can't blame your friends. <laughs> da, 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 da. This is the thing. Deborah and Candace should even be in the same room. Ashley's a gutter snipe. So is Deborah. So is her little friends. Birds of a feather. So Candace is a woman of class and caliber. And I know y'all want to, <laughs> I know Diva is like, what the heck? <laughs> you know what I'm like, what the heck? Not for nothing. Let, let's do a, let's do a, hold on, Shay. I'm going to let you finish. But let's do a all jokes aside for a minute. Candace learned this behavior from her mother. Somebody asked me if I was watching from season one. Yes, ma'am, I was. Candace and her mother have a very toxic relationship. Do you remember when the Candace and her mother were sitting down with the therapist and she said her mother took the pocketbook and slapped upside her face? Yeah. Candace learned toxicity from her mama. And so, so we can pretend, and that's fine, that Candace don't got a reckless mouth on her. She does. She uses her mouth because she was never able to use her hands on her mother. You have and a great she question. She has walked in the streets. She has walked in the streets using her mouth with people, thinking, you know what? I'm going to be cool because this is what I learned and did all my life. But I promise you, if she thinks she can continue with that mouth like that in the regular streets, it's going to be very problematic for her. Go ahead, finish, Shan. And I get what you're saying, Diva. However, did Candace start with Deborah or did Deborah start with Candace? All I've seen is Candace defending herself. And the way she defends herself might not be ethical. It might be lethal, yada, yada, yada. She is defending herself against these heathens, you know? So I'm proud of Candace for walking away from this toxic work environment. Because sometimes you have to. No amount of money is worth your pride, your peace, your family. They come for this girl family every chance they get. Every chance they get. He done lose, lost jobs. His reputation is ruined. So I'm proud of her. I really did. I really do think she walked away because nothing is worth your peace. And again, Candace has money. She's a whole singer out here. I don't, I'm not arguing if she's a good singer, bad singer. She's a singer, Diva. She hit him. She's not notes. making billboards though. So did you download her song? Started, Diva, don't laugh. Don't. Let me tell you, she's a <laughs> Shan, can you name five of her songs? Chan, Chan, it took her six years to figure out the work environment was toxic and she should walk away. Honey, she was trying and, and she, to... she didn't know it was toxic when Monique was running around the table trying to beat her down. Well, this was the straw that broke the camel's back. Okay. Oh. She's a singer. 
She has good songs. Everybody starts from somewhere. Not Name five of them, Shan. Name huh? five of her songs. Well, that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking <laughs> about <episode. laughs> that part. Drive back. Drive back. Uh -huh. Period. Let me tell you. Candace, you know, she has a lot going on. She's going to go far. She's young. She's beautiful. You know, she, she has some things to work on. Her mouth is not perfect. But you can't attack me constantly and tell me how to defend myself. She defends herself by the way she speaks. And if they can't take it, get out the kitchen. And Belly. then Emmanuel no. said one thing. He said, oh, somebody said, a housewife said no one gets fired, right? Lisa but, then in the other, but then in the other breath, y'all say, oh, there's only one or two who voluntarily walk away. Well, Candace is the one or two. Because okay. she has money. She doesn't need this check. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I'll be the Lulu. <laughs> is, I she should have went with Monique. She should have left the and show allegedly with Monique. She's a, uh, allegedly, she's a statement, so. Huh? Well, is that why she was complaining about all the money she had to invest into her tour? Well, does she oh, have money? Oh, 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 that was causing problems between her. Well, that's still her mom. And but Candace, that's her mom's she, money. Then you ready to talk about it, Emmanuel? Uh, 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 Mel, you're up. Okay, how you doing, Miss Deep? How you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm I was going to say, you know what? Don't get stressed. It's just a TV show. And you uh, ain't no headaches about it. Don't get no yeah, headaches. I'm trying not to. I'm about to get another cup of tea, but I'm listening. Go ahead. Uh, okay, good. No, I was going to say for me, you know what? It was uh, it was a surprise, this information. I mean, I, I was busy and I ended up popping up, up on the computer to talk about this early. I got pulled into a debate about whether or not Candace was a good person, which was a mistake. I shouldn't go there. For me, my focus really is that um, on this show, there's no angels. I don't think there's no angels on, in Potomac, period. And I think the only loser on that uh, you know, last night episode was a human being who was um, going crazy and showing employers, future employers, that you know she's unbalanced after a year of um, holding a grudge. So I think that for me, that was definitely the person who lost that battle. But for me, my focus is um, the show. I think that you know, I. Whether or not Candace left or not at this point, I, I'm, I'm over it. You know, if she, you know, I didn't want her to leave, but if she's gone, it's okay. But for me, the big thing was that Giselle's still there, and that's where my focus is at. Um, I think Giselle is killing the show, to be quite honest with you. I think she refused to work this year, and I think anybody to be rewarded for that kind of behavior is just it boggles my mind. I don't really want to get in for me, it kind of bores me, not, not what y'all said tonight, but for me, I don't want to focus on. Who's a good person? Who's not a good person? My focus is the show. Mm -hmm. And if I love Candace, but if Candace have to go, let her go. But I, I don't want the show to be slowed down this year. I feel like next year, I'm sorry. I feel like next year what's going to happen is, um, sorry. <laughs> I feel like next year what's going to happen is Giselle's going to do the thing she's always done, which is uh, basically, you know, spread rumors and, and get very happy about gossip and things like that. I also think it's a really bad precedent for her to say that she would get excited for people to get uh, physically assaulted. You know, whenever it came to Wendy or when it comes to Candace, she gets excited. But my thing to, to Mr. Zell would be, don't get too excited because somebody comes up, comes, comes up on this show and unfortunately slaps the water out your legs, then you will be, you know, having a different uh, story going on. You would not be, you know, happy that somebody's getting into a, a fight. You would definitely be speaking a different story. So I think that Giselle, for me, is... Um, I don't believe that she's worth the clout that Bravo gives her. I really don't. I don't. I think Bravo gives her too much clout, and I don't see where the worth is at for me. I, I really don't. Um, and so that pro, that was pretty much the thing that kind of gagged me. I literally was at work, and I called into Curve Show, and that was where the guys was at. I saw Emmanuel and um, uh, and Sebastian, there, and we we were debating about whether or not Candace was a good person. And I, I thought that from my mind, I said, why did I do that? That that doesn't make no sense for me. The biggest thing is I'm happy if Candace is happy. And um, I'm sad that the show is going to be the same way next year. You know, it's going to be the same thing that we've been going through for eight years. Um, Giselle loves hazing people. She said it in one of her interviews with the um, interview a couple of years ago on the Breakfast Club, that that was one of her, that her best times when she was to be able to haze the people. And that's what she does now on the show. She hazed them. And when they fight back against it, whether it's below the belt or not, she will say, I'm not I'm not working with her. I want her off the show, Monique. You know, Wendy, Candace, she wanted these girls, she wanted these people off the show. And, um, you know, I think that for me, she should be off the show. 
because um, she slows the show down. I really, you know, I love Candace, but I, I wouldn't mind any of the ladies go um, as long as Giselle goes too. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of much what I wanted to say. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, it's unfortunate my phone is ringing stuff like that. It's a little crazy. But um, yeah, that's just what it is. I think that the show is, is no angels there. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really, I think not, I think they all have problems and um, yeah, that's, that's about it. That's about it. Yeah, I, I do. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I do agree with you, but I think maybe they cut Giselle a little break this year because her father died. You know what? And okay. So I, I forgot about that part. You're right. So I, I feel bad. Well, let me say this too. Cause I, I sometime when, when we when I get on panels and or we get on panels, we kind of, um, I think that Giselle is a beautiful woman physically. Mm -hmm. I think she's a complicated lady. I'm being very serious right now. I think she's a complicated lady, but I think she has flaws. I think she's insecure. I think she's very mean spirited. I don't think you need to be that stinky. I really don't. I think you should be on the show and show your life and stop always hiding. And for a long time, all your love interests lived in your phone. Nobody really knew what was going on in your life. You shouldn't live that way. The only time that we unfortunately see any kind of um, human human part of her is when she's dealing with her medical condition and when her, you know, unfortunately when her father has his medical condition. So, um, you know, that's not enough to stay on the show and being mean and looking at other people's lives. I, I get bored with that. It's been eight years. How many times can we see her rubbing her hands together, getting really gleeful about, oh, I'm going to get the tea on this new person or this person. And who got who? Oh, my that that you know what? Uh, Diva, what, what everybody was saying, that gets tired after a, a, a little bit. People will get really nasty and mean with you. If all you do every time I turn around is you sitting around looking for me to have a downfall, that will drive anybody to get really angry with you. And it's, it's through the grace of God that somebody has not slapped the crap out of her. So the simple fact is that she's up there happy that people getting, you know, physically aggressed. Well, you know what, uh, ma'am, listen, you, you're not the nicest person either. I think that just because people are loud and vulgar doesn't mean that what other people do is not as nasty and evil. I think I would put a Giselle in the evil category. She's a woman who can be very nasty and very calculating. I think that the person that Monique could have went after would have been Giselle. That was the, the the architect of all that chaos that was happening. Now, mind you, Monique was not innocent. The reason, the person who took her down was her husband and her friend that she had for twenty five years. Those were who took her down. It was nobody on this cast. Let's get that straight. But Giselle definitely was being very nasty about things and very evil. And I think that you know, I don't know what Robin was thinking today to have even Robin. You know, Robin is is what um, Karen said a couple of years ago. I'm not going to say what she said, but she called her dizzy. She called it another part to it. Um, she's dizzy. She's harmless. She, you know, she's she she doesn't bring anything. But Giselle is going to do the same thing next year. She's going to heal, thank God, you know, and get over this 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 uh, death that's that's a very tragic to her. But she's going to go back to her evil ways. And so we're going to have to endure another woman being like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she said it's about my husband. I can't believe she said it's about my business. Really, on the ninth season, I can't do that. I simply cannot endure that again. And. Um, yeah, yeah. So I just can't do that. And with Ashley, I think that for me, yeah, you can invite whoever you want to your place or whatever, you know. But I think, you know what I think too? With the Housewives of um, Atlanta in the heyday, my girl Phaedra, who I who I like and who I don't like, she had many enemies in Atlanta. But the girls and the producers knew not to bring that woman who wrote that book about her to those parties because it could have went totally nuclear. So I don't understand why in Potomac they don't understand that rule. That sometimes these women do have enemies. I mean, we as human beings, we have this sometimes. And you're not supposed to bring the enemies to the party because if what's going to happen is if somebody turns their back on you, then you're going to turn into an animal. You're going to get crazy and start fussing and fighting and doing everything else. No, I don't think that Candace is responsible for that. So the person who lost in that problem was Mr. Deborah because she showed any you know people that she you know that she can hold a grudge you know in uh you said the reunion well she didn't get a ticket to the reunion she she was waiting like a fan you know just like you know just to get, get a chance to attack somebody and that's just pathetic to me i think it's low brow low class and unbalanced and it's, it's garbage and i'm glad that her and ashley are on a pause or whatever because the woman was a hot mess i don't i don't think too much about her looks that's not my business but i think what she showed to me last night was 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 ugly was her actions her, her actions were total totally abominable it was out of this out of this world why would you sit around like a predator and wait for the cameras to go down just so you could have a real conversation get out of here girl you could have you could have showed up anywhere else. Potomac is a very small place. They say that the streets talk all the time. So get on the streets and find a girl and talk to her like a real woman. You gotta get up there and say you hurt my feelings a year ago. Get out of here. Stop it. Yeah. But so you, I, what, you gotta, what you gotta understand though, Ashley is the catalyst, right? Because here's the thing: 
what what happens with these friends of or these people that come in randomly and they're not so random because you're I'm recommending my girlfriend. Well, behind the scenes, I told my girlfriend, girl, you're going to come up here. You're going to do this, you're going whatever, because my check looked like this and I'm having fun. And all I got to do is X, Y, Z. And they're looking for new housewives. They're looking for people to be a friend of. Maybe, you know, the friend of make a good check. Right. Right. So so you got that in the person's ear. You got Sharice being very performative. She's trying to get that champagne glass back because although when they showed us that clip of Sharice like blacking out at her crab fest or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> right, you would think it before you seen the scene that it was something real. Right. We saw, we saw it wasn't nothing real. Sharice is being performative because she wants to get back that champagne glass, right? So because she knows what that check is like and she needs that check and she wants that check, right? So now I hear you telling a bunch of friends, if you get on here, this is what your check going to look like. This is what your check could potentially look like. So they're going to be performative. Now, you see, when she came there for the cameras, she came there and she was hugging and kissing everybody. And Wendy even hugged, kissed her, whatever the case may be. Right. So she waited till the camera was off. So that's why I'm saying she knew what she came to do. But she asked, was the cameras off? Because she knew she wanted the bus Candace down. Absolutely. Can I say this too? And let's, and let's be clear on this. Yeah. Many but, people say, oh, she hold an old, a old grudge from a year ago. There's people that hold grudges for 10, 15 years, and you yourself forgot what the heck you did to them, and they can't even half explain what, what, what they, what they um, claimed you did. And those people need to go to therapy, too. She need to go to therapy. because They may need to go to therapy, but yeah. I'm going to be clear with you, Mel. There's a ton of people in this world that's, that's sad. that will hold a grudge on something you did that you didn't even know you did because they didn't even tell you you did it, but they got a whole grudge on you and they will tell everybody else around you that they you did X, Y, Z, but they never came and told you, but they got a grudge against you. And 10 years later, they still got that grudge. That's Let's sad. be clear. That's pe it may be sad, but people do that all the time on a regular basis. So the fact that this girl is coming with a year old grudge, it means what to me? It doesn't mean anything. If you deal with people in the world, there are people like that. There are employers that have managers that have fired people and then you call to get a reference and that manager will tear that person down and if they happened two, three years ago. Yeah, in business that happens. But you know what? I think in between women, which, which, what she did. Now, you know what I was gonna say too? The social media was really made my stomach just kind of almost um, hurled. When she was on social media celebrating that this woman, this beautiful lady, was her face was messed up and cutting, and she was up there, on, you know, the Deborah lady. She's on social media just celebrating, just having a good time. That was absolutely one of the most disgusting things I've seen on Instagram in a very long time. Because we saw the footage uh, about a year, a year. We saw the footage about a year ago, and we saw how violent it was. And here, this woman is on her thing. I got them. I got. It. I'm like, oh my god. Oh, no. There are people that are busting people down at the school and the people are standing there videotaping in the real time just so they could put on social media. Yeah. So I just thought, I, I know, but I think that for me in that situation, if so for somebody, I think it was said earlier tonight, not you, Miss Deva, but in general, if somebody saw that Miss Deborah's uh, uh, disgusting social media and for them to come in any space and say that Candace was responsible for a lunatic, I'm going to have to have their heads checked because no, that woman was going there for chaos and confusion and damage. And she caused a lot of damage because she had an attention to do that. I only knew that based on her social media. I would have not known based on the video footage from that fight. I just thought it was some kind of problem that happened and got out of control. But after that, it showed me that she had hatred in her heart and she didn't care who was hurt. And that, and for people to justify that and support that is outrageous. Yeah. Okay. They say thank. Thank you, Luciana. Um. Yeah. Who child? Um. Katrina, you're up. Hey. Good evening, y'all. Um. What I was saying is, the fight with grown women. First of all, Deborah came there with that agenda. Second of all, Candace walked away from you. If I'm walking away from you, not giving you none of my energy, why you keep coming after me? And then when Candace was calling you Sesame Street, you was on the internet playing with cookies, saying you the cookie monster. So obviously, I was she obviously it wasn't bothering you too much if you was trying to make a joke out of it, because you was on the internet with cookies and milk, saying about you the cookie monster. And then you getting mad with Candace. 
because she responded because you lied on this woman's husband. You lied. And then you getting mad because you got called out. I would never even show my face on screen no more seeing that people seen that I was a liar. Then another thing, I blame production. Production know this woman lied on a cast member and y'all saw her lying on a cast member and y'all still let her came on that set. So I blame them too. Ashley knew exactly what was going on. She knew exactly that's why she wanted them cameras down. And like you said, Diva, she was probably telling her about the money. And then she was probably saying, well, girl, you going and you do this to Candace, you know, fight her. They'll see that she's a troublemaker and they'll try to get her off the show. Again, like I said before, when Monique and Candace got into that fight, Candace walked away from Monique three times. Three times she walked away from Monique. Monique was mad with this girl because Giselle and them started back talking to Candace. Like I said, Monique was trying to ice Candace out. And then people saying that how Candace's mouth is reckless. Have we forgot about Ashley talking about Ray private parts? Have we forgot about Ashley looking up Robin um, uh, financials? Have we forgot Speak about Robin, it. Ashley uh, talking about Robin marriage? Have we forgot about how she be talking about Karen? Come on. Then you first of all, and don't forget now, when Monique lost her baby, then Ashley said Monique lost her baby because she was drinking and driving. Y'all got to bring y'all to make it sense. Remind I mean, make people, it make Katrina. Sense. Bring, Thank it, you. bring it both ways. If you want to come for Candace and every last one I'm on there, mouth need to be taken in. Because Robin then was saying something about uh Ray. I say with Karen repeated when Karen be drunk. Okay, they did that. Giselle going around talking to everybody. Like I said, if she wanted Wendy to know that her husband was uh, seeing a, this Instagram person, why didn't you bring it to Wendy? No, you took it to Ashley, your little henchman, because you know if you said it out, Ashley will go do it. Remember, she said she put the uh, she start the pot and Ashley just stirs it up. Okay, but see, y'all keep coming for Candace. Make it make sense. Yes, Candace got to leave them out, but so do Ashley. So do all of them. And then the thing of it is, like I told y'all before, they've been wanting Candace off that that um that cast so they can get Sharice back. That's the whole thing. Because, like I said, of all things going around, like you said, Sharice being very performative or whatsoever. They wanted Sharice back uh, on season five. That's why they was trying to ice Candace out. And then it didn't work out that way. Giselle hated Monique a little more. So that's why they banned with Candace to get Monique out. Now, when Wendy was down there, she got a drink thrown in her face. Production stopped her from fighting on uh, Mia because the man told her she had too much to lose. Now, this girl got her back turned. You throwing a drink in my in my hair? What you want from me? You sat up and you lied. Later, I owe you nothing. You lied on my you lied on my family. I owe you nothing. I owe you dust. And like I said, maybe Candace wasn't the right one. But like I said, when she throws that glass and what you guys say, she deserved to get stitches. No, she did not deserve to get stitches. She was telling Deborah, this is not a place in time. NECA told her the same thing. It was not a place in time. But you hit me in my forehead with a glass and I got stitches. Girl, you lucky. You lucky you only got that butt whipping because you, when I, if I was seeing my face, you would have got it worse than that. Because you was there. And I, like I said again, I still blame production for letting her up on the set because she shouldn't have been there, even though that was Ashley thing. We know you lied on the cast member. We know what you did. So why in the world would we, we, we aren't you even on camera? Bravo need, I mean, they need to get them on that too because you seen her lie on this man. It ain't nothing we said to ourselves. It's something that we seen with our own two eyes. And you still was allowed to come on set. So all the thing I'm saying is, if everybody coming for Candace the way they're coming for Candace, they need to come for Ashley and them to Ashley too. Because she got the reckless mouth just like Candace. Her mouth was more reckless than Candace. But Candace know how to read with her because he can and got some education. And she know what to do. Ashley got to be bound down because she got to stick with that man that uh, don't give her enough money to go uh, shop at Fashion Bug. Or fashion, uh, fashion, a family dollar, because the clothes look like they come from the flea market. So you're not even getting that much <laughs> money from that man. So girl, get it, get it together. 
you doing all this talking and whatsoever and you lose this check, you know you're going to be up the, up the street because who's going to take care of Sheila then? Uh, both of y'all going to be under that bridge. But anyway, I digress. I'm done. Amen. Not the flea market. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to run through this scene real quick because we done took up almost two hours on this and I got a major headache. And I just want to say this. Let's be clear. Everybody that comes on that show, they kiss the ring of Giselle and, and, and Robin and, 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 and all the people since y'all want to do this light skin, dark skin thing. They kiss the ring of them. If, if you that girl, I'm not coming on nobody and kissing nobody. <laughs> I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to stand up to who I'm, I am, and I'm going to do what I do. But they kiss the ring, and then they, they get mad when they, when they get burnt by the ring they kiss. But we're going to carry you on. The last scene was the show. Okay? The last scene was the, was the show. Mia, somebody needs to mute because I'm getting background feedback. Um, the last um, scene was the show, and the pictures were up. I don't know who picture is really good. If I had to pick from what I remember from the pictures they selected, I'm going to say Wendy's was probably the best. Um, but other than that, the things, it wasn't popping. It reminds me of... Um, Dollar Tree. No, it reminds me of um, The Real Housewives of Atlanta. When Season they two. That, yes, they did that fabulous photo shoot. It was everything. Where they except had for they a, had a real except for they had a real cameraman David um um David Blanks yeah they they did the alternate personalities or whatever alter ego I mean that thing was everything um so this fashion show this photo shoot it, it was kind of low budget and I was just like uh. but anyway I do like the way Karen pulled everybody to the table and they thanked everybody for coming and and Neka and Wendy almost had a little moment. Cause Wendy kind of gave a prop. She said, I, I, I appreciate NECA for coming over and trying to break up this fight too. Cause nobody else did. Giselle threw a little dig in there and said how, you know, with at this trying moment in her life, the only person that really called her are the people that called her were true, you know, true or whatever. And, um, Candace said something smart in that little moment too, but whatever. Um, and then the last scene with Mia and, um, and with Gordon, all I can say is tragic, and, and the fact that J Jeremiah is in the crossfires. And when that happened, it reminded me of when um, Josiah was in the crossfires between Daddy One, Daddy Two. However, um, Drew, um, you know, made that whole thing up. I just thought it was tragic and sad. I don't want to resurface y'all, please, with this fight because I got a major headache. Um, let's focus on Mia. And, and, and Gordon and this last scene and, and roll this thing all out of here. In my opinion, your thoughts? They both is toxic as the world. Um, I thought it was toxic all the way around. I really didn't need this scene at all because I thought so much less of both of them. I thought less of Gordon for thinking he can lock Mia up in a room and take her phone. Like, sir, who told you you was the police and you could lock her up? I think less of Mia for whatever she's doing with this dang man incognito. I think it's really, really pathetic to put this out. And you know, you got kids of age. Don't put your kids out and sell them out for a TV show. That's just stupid. Mm, yeah. Savannah, you're up. I agree with you, Diva. I also have a headache and I'm glad it's the, the last show of the season. I agree with Shan. The photo shoot was a uh, Dollar Tree. I didn't like any of the the photos. Um, uh, shame on Mia for not protecting her children, any of them, um, especially the young men. Uh, she She's selling them all for a storyline. Uh, Gordon, you got exactly what you paid for because you paid for a trick. You got played by a trick and you, you are a trick. Um, and, and then to, to expose your, your storyline, you allowed her to, to do everything that, that, um, she, she was doing, uh, you knew she, she played you before you walked her down the aisle and put a ring on her finger. You knew, um, 
the possibility of the paternity of that child and you still allowed, you still wed her and gave her the title of wife. So you knew all this and you still played in our faces, both of you. And um, Mia, you you brought all this to um, have a storyline next year. Um, both toxic, my, my um, heart goes to these children, um, especially the young men who um, have to view their mothers on, on a TV screen um, in this manner and um, just shame on them, all of them. It's, it's pathetic. It's sad. It is absolutely sad. I'm ready for it to be over and I hope they go on hiatus for a few years like Miami. I agree with you. I agree with you. Betty G, I appreciate you. I'm all right. I just, these, these reality shows it, you know, they're toxic and they get all of us become a little toxic in the recaps because they so toxic and it's sad. And I really, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm coming to you, Emmanuel. What I really hate and which is really disappointing to me, you have these black and brown girls who have the opportunity to clear almost millions of dollars every year by the money they make on the show and then all the endorsements and other things that they can do after the show, like, you know, like in connection of having that personality on the show and they're all blowing and puffing their bag out the window. It's sad to me because I promise you this, I don't know too many jobs. You know, I have a lot of people in my family that do engineering, like they're in that type of field. You know, I have a cousin that did his own, got a patent for something. Yeah, they're raking in the dollars, right? And my brother, he does um, clearance, right, out there in D.C., raking in the dollars. But there's not too many professions where you are going to clear a, a five, as a as a regular employee, I'm not talking about you, the CEO, the VP, or none of that. It's not too many professions where you're going to clear five hundred thousand, seven hundred and fifty thousand, and here y'all are puffing it out the window. It's sad to watch. They 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 are making more than a lot of these actors and actresses that have been out here for years doing their thing. A lot of them in their sitcoms and even, I mean, come on. What do you think, what's the name, Monique the Comedian has been complaining about all this time? They get disrespected. These girls have propelled to where they do 18 episodes and they're claiming a $500,000, $750,000 check. And they puffing it out the window over stupid stuff, colorism, dumb fights. No, you have these fights and you make up at the end. That's what we're used to. I used to love the reunions and then they all make up and then they come back next season and they add it again. But now it's so toxic. It's spilling into YouTube. It's spilling into the Instagram. And some of these recaps, that's why I stopped loving Marriage DC. Mm. Some of these recaps, they will have the fans doxing people, threatening mm. people, saying mm. they're going to a lot of people. So why do you think, I know words are harmful. Words are harmful because some of these subscribers, they never met other people. It's words going back and forth between the subscribers. And people are talking about, I'm coming to unalive you. You should unalive yourself. I got your address. I shared your address with somebody. And it's like, whoa. So do I know words hurt? Yeah, they hurt. And people get crazy over words. And that's why once I found out that the fans were getting so toxic and I love I watched Love and Marriage Huntsville from the beginning because I'm that girl. I still got cable. Once I knew they was getting toxic, I said, I'm bowing out. It ain't that serious for me. Not a click, not a view, nothing. You doxing people and you doing all of that. And God forbid you said anything about Melanie. You're a hater. You don't understand. You're, you're, you're starting with man, diva. You love Martell and he's a cheater. He, child. You better check with your next door neighbors that their, their, their husbands are cheating too. I cannot. That's why I had to bow out because it's toxic. You can't even have your opinion. It's so toxic. And God, and people act like just because you like the person, you can't call out when they do something wrong. But if you do that with some of these shows, the people lose their natural mind. They're sending you emails. It's ridiculous. A man will. Quickly, please. Me and Gordon. Um, well, let me just say something really quickly about the photo shoot. I actually, 
I, I don't think none of them looked as their character, but I did really like how Robin looked, how Ashley and Karen looked. I thought they did pretty good. Um, Karen walking in there with security, I thought was very ridiculous. And I want to publicly apologize to Sharice because a lot of the things that she said last season are coming into fruition. Um, mm, yeah. And here's the thing. Karen, you want to reprimand Ashley talking about putting people in harm's way and in danger? The word danger, take it out of your vocabulary because you were recently in an activity more than once that could put out entire families out children losing parents so you're the last person who needs to be talking about keeping people safe you're no longer the grand dom to me sharice called you the grand scam and that's what you're going to be until you do right by what you did then me and gordon um i think they single-handedly saved real housewives of potomac the drama was out the window but with that being said very unfortunate that their children are going to have this legacy on on media forever um that poor boy is never gonna he's always gonna be questioning now is that my dad is that not my dad mia even when you are at 304 there's still rules to that he told you don't get the kids involved and you did that's wrong and then going back to what diva said in the beginning of the show how low can your self-esteem be as a man to be okay with your wife screwing a man on the side Mm, that's that's horrible. But that's all I have to say. Yeah, thank you. What happened to for better or for worse? E, you're up. Okay, so all those heifers went to that photo release party uh, for those pictures they took as black icons. And Wendy came in and I had to piggyback off of Savannah with that blonde straight hair wig longer and blonder than Giselle's. This was a reveal party for sh your uh, photo as Cheryl Lee Ralph. And you're coming in here dressed like Iggy Azalea. That looked crazy to me, as well as that red looking dress like she was going to a quinceanera. And the reason I'm getting on Wendy is because Wendy couldn't wait to jump down Ashley's throat from the moment Ashley walked in. Wendy was looking for a moment and Wendy said previously marriage and kids are off limits. Well, Mia hasn't said anything about Wendy's marriage or kids the whole season. And here comes Wendy and her goofy looking husband in the confessional doing that follow-up scene. I'm sorry, I have to throw this in, Diva. Um, after the season already wrapped and Eddie is going to get up there talking about, oh, Gordon sent a text message to the group chat with all the men and he was dogging Mia out. Goofy Eddie was sitting there on camera gossiping like a little schoolgirl spilling the beans and Wendy was grinning like the Cheshire cat. Wendy was delighting in this bad news. It was very Catholic of her, I must agree. And flat out, Goofy Wendy and Goofy Eddie are messy. Those two will say and do anything to be on camera. If Gordon sent the text to all the men, how come none of the other men spoke up? Ray didn't come on the confessional with Karen and read the text. Juan wasn't in Robin's confessional. Aneka's husband wasn't there. Chris Bassett wasn't with Candace. You know why none of the men came forward? Because it's messy as hell. And what goes around comes around. And so when Gordon sent those sent that information to TMZ, oh please, it was a you might as well have stuck a fork in it. And I have to end this. This is my final point. Gordon is messy. He's a messy human being, and he reminds me of my ex-husband. I can tell that Gordon is a nasty person when the cameras are off, and all I could think about was Gordon emptying her bank account to zero when she told him she wanted to leave. And then last night, like in my opinion said, Mia said uh, Gordon took that phone and locked her in the room for two hours and Gordon admitted to it. That's kidnapping. That man is terrible and I can see it on him. And about those kids, Gordon doesn't give a damn about those kids. In fact, Gordon is weaponizing those kids against Mia. The fact that Gordon would uh, text their mutual friends disparaging information about the mother of at least one of his kids and then send the information to DMZ. It just proves to me Gordon has asked those kids questions about Mia's new man and I also believe he has vented to those kids about how hurt he is and he is putting those kids in the middle of this and it's on camera. Why else after 11 years would you be 
getting mic'd up and filming a scene where you're questioning the paternity of the son who is none the wiser of another man being his father. At this point, it's been 11 years. I don't care who the father is. Uh, how can I give a damn about who the father is when you knew this before you even got married and you said you were going to raise this child as your own? So again, Gordon is weaponizing these kids against Mia because he is bitter and he couldn't wait until the Bravo cameras came in to fill those things and say, oh, you've been having an affair on me for 10 years. Gordon, that's your goddamn problem. Gordon said two minutes after that, you that he told... Um, Oh, what did he say? He told Mia that when he turned 70 and his parts stopped working, that she could have a boyfriend. Just don't bring them around the kids and don't be in public. He said, don't put the kids in it. But you just put the kids in it, too. So you broke your own rule. OK, Mia is not having an affair. Mia has a new fiance and she is in love. Mia is 39 years old and she still has time. She's working on her second marriage. Gordon is 71 and he is almost out of time. And this is why you should have stuck with your first wife because you were probably more comparable in age. These old men are going to get enough of dating women 30 years their junior. Mia was 28 when they got married and Gordon was 61. Gordon should have known better. Mia was a stripper and Gordon was married. So don't get on this TV show and tell me Mia has been cheating on you since before you got married. Well, because before you and Mia got married, you were already married. That's the whole point. Like I tell my daughter, it's frozen. Let it go. I mean, it's it's over. Gordon was sitting on that couch. He had a bad attitude, disrupting the household, not working, not bringing in any money. Your family had to downsize and relocate. And plus, you wasn't giving up no D. Hell no. It's over. Why would you think anything different? And my this is my last point. 15 more seconds. Gordon said he was looking at that cell phone bill. And this is when I, I was just team Mia all the way. He said he was looking at that cell phone bill and noticed that Mia was talking to another man first thing in the morning up until she pulled into the car garage when she came in the house. What does that tell you? That's who Mia really wants to be with. Coming home to Gordon is like a prison for Mia. And it's a claustrophobic feeling. And I know that feeling. Mia is and has been tired of Gordon for a while. And can you imagine leaving the house and being free and being in love with someone else and then having to hang up and not speak to them because you have to come home and deal with the grumpy man on the sofa in the living room? No. Take yourself back to Charleston expeditiously. The dog. I'm just upset that we had to sit through 19 weeks of uh, NECA and Wendy talking about a shrine when we could have been talking about Mia and Gordon's real life. Come on what's now. really going on and their real marriage and their real problems and this real uh, issue of uh, cheating, not cheating, uh, arrangement, not arrangement, uh, can't uh, perform, can't, cannot perform um the children being involved that's what we should have been seeing that's the real life you're talking about reality that's reality tv yeah we should have been seeing that for 19 weeks yeah and it makes me upset that we you know got two minutes of it yes it was it was bad to see i feel sorry for the kids but that two minutes deserve the first seat because yes. she she gave her real life of what's really going on I agree and, and nobody knew nobody knew mm -hmm. what was really happening in her life mm -hmm. they hid it that well that she had a concubine he probably did too mm -hmm. so that you know I'm just upset we had to uh, kill 19 weeks of crap where we could have been you know, we could have had this. Mm -hmm. I agree with you on that. What, but see, the thing is, E, did you leave us, E? The thing is, E, um, what, what was I was trying to say? She married him. She married him. And so it's not just Gordon is messy. They both were messy. She married him for the money. Now the money is gone and she wants to leave. But not only did she marry him, and I got to get the mail because I'm in overtime. Um, she married him, and then on top of her marrying him, you're going to bring your kids around this man, and you're still married. 
that's so darn messy and problematic. That's a whole nother story for another day. And we got to come back with that because I really got to go. Everybody, I don't mean to cut you off, but y'all got 60 seconds. Um, Mel, you're up. I'll try my best, Miss Diva. So I think that for me, I just wish that. So Mia and uh, Gordon is giving me the show that I wish that Monique and Chris would have gave. I'll leave it right there. I think that for me, um, it, it, was, it was a shocker. It was a total shocker to see that that turn of events. I didn't see it coming. I mean, they. I didn't see it coming. I think that um, Gordon, I, for me, what I saw was a man that was hurt. I think that I saw a man that unfortunately had made some bad decisions in his business, knew that that was going to affect his marriage. And, you know, he had a, he, he was in over his head. I don't think that me is a really hurtful woman, but I just think it was a very sad relationship where, um, I don't know, I, I, I didn't see Mia as being as, um, I don't know, I was shocked. I was shocked by the fact that Mia, of all people, could be controlled for two hours in a room. I, I didn't see, I thought that she would have broke. I, I, it was all shock. It was a total shock. It was unhealthy, very toxic, emotionally dangerous. Um, yeah, it was a lot. It was a total shocker at the end. Um, but yeah, they, they I, this is the show. I wish that I'll say it again. This is the show because you know, there were so many rumors about Monique and Chris. This is what I think this is what their relationship was. It's probably why they got divorced. So the fact that we see it on the show, uh, and, and me and going is it, it, it was pretty, it was pretty rough. It, I didn't, I didn't, I felt a little dirty after watching those scenes, especially when it came to the reveal of the paternity of you know, the kids and stuff. So I thought that was pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah, thank you, Mel. And Juan and, and Robin should have had that um, conversation too, Jersey girl. I do agree with you on that. Katrina, right. 60 seconds, 60 seconds. Okay, okay, okay. The only thing I can say is I tell you what my granddad told me when I was growing up. Never love a person more than they love you because you always get the short end of the stick. And the thing was, Gordon, he had a wife. You should have worked it out with your wife. Like you say, everybody don't stay together. But look how you did your wife. You should have got a divorce before you went cheated. See, all this stuff is a boomerang effect. And you honestly think that me work at a strip club, that you were going to be her only sugar daddy. You think she stopped talking to those other men. You was a fool to think that. And now you played a stupid game. Now you got a stupid prize. Now you still held up because the family took that money away from you because they know you was using it, uh, that Mia was spending it all up. I don't blame that family. I would have stopped the, uh, the process too because you supposed to have been, and yes, I can't say he did care for them kids because Mia was out and he was taking care of the kids. And he had told Mia, you need to be at home. Uh, helping these kids with their homework and stuff. You told them you was going to be here, but you're not even here. So the thing of it is, both of them did the uh, wrong thing. Mia knew he was married when she got with him, but she still married him. So that's what she gets. And then Gordon knew he was married when he got with her. So that's what he gets. So both of them played a stupid game. Now they stuck with a stupid marriage, and now they stuck with stupid prizes. That's it. Thank you. Um, Who did I miss? Did I miss anybody? Me. Um, she has 60 seconds. Listen, I never seen so many fools in my life. Me as a fool, Gordon is a fool, and the side piece. Wait, so what man is waiting around ten years for you to be in a whole marriage and just waiting till your marriage fall apart? Oh, low self esteem, low self esteem, all of them, a whole mess. But I'm not surprised. It is Mia. Let's not be surprised. Bless her heart. And again, Candace left the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. um, listen guys I thank you for being here let me just say this real quick they give a little update on Diddy and, and, and it's pretty much what I said um, they're waiting to see what they find in this house right so everybody said Diddy, Diddy's on the run but there's no charges, charges yet because if it was charges they would have said they got a warrant out for his arrest right so Diddy on video pacing around airport at the two federal raids um, why his, uh, uh, he left the kids there. Listen, I run through this real quick. Cause they said he was tipped off on Sunday. And I said earlier, he was tipped off. He already knew they was coming. Right. So TMZ has the first video of Diddy after his homes were raided by the feds Monday. And instead of being in handcuffs and on the ground, the guys, the guy was kind of just walking around, check out the footage we are saying, which um, we shot around 3 PM. Monday, a couple hours after the raids at his home got underway. Mm -hmm. At the Miami um, Executive Airport, where eyewitnesses tell us Diddy and some other people got stopped by the feds. 
or we're told it shows Diddy pacing around outside a customs office there at the airport. And as you can see, he's not being detained and he certainly doesn't seem to be in custody here. Instead, Diddy is just walking around all by his lonesome. An eyewitness tells us that Diddy was waiting on other people in his party here where he was stopped and questioned by the feds as well as during the whole ordeal. But we haven't been able to confirm who he was, who was rolling with him yet. All we know is he and his crew got stopped. Um, we're told he appeared to be um, aboard a separate private jet, and that's when Homeland Security rolled up. While it might seem strange that Diddy was in cuff, it actually tracks with what we heard about his situation thus far. Namely, sources with direct knowledge tell us he is not under arrest at this point, and more importantly, he obviously isn't on the run either. As we reported two separate raids in LA and Miami went down Monday, where Homeland Security agents um, barreled through his homes and escorted some people out. There's still a lot of unanswered questions, but it would appear law enforcement officials are probing federal crimes that have been alleged against Diddy um, of late in several lawsuits, including alleged sex trafficking, all of which Diddy has denied again and again. NBC News reports that federal officials have already spoken to three women and a man pertaining to claims of ST, among other allegations and other interviews are supposedly scheduled to go down in the near future. We reach out to Diddy's camp. So far, no word back. And uh, there was another article who said that pretty much he was tipped off. Um, he was tipped off on Sunday um, that they were coming. I told you that earlier. He was tipped off. I told you they are interviewing people. I told you they ain't got no arrest for him just yet because there's nothing to arrest them on. Everything they know so far, they've been new. So they're waiting to see what they pull up out of that house. And once they see if they pull stuff up out of that house that coincides and correlates to everything they know from the people that are speaking, then they're going to see if something can go down. If I see a bunch of people having, you know, relations together, because this is YouTube, y'all got to talk clean. If I see a bunch of people having relations together, what does that mean? What does that really mean? You see me in the video getting down with Diddy and several other people. That don't mean that it's all sinister. If we all agree to the get down. Anyway, guys, I told y'all they're waiting to see what evidence they find, how they can utilize such evidence. And there's nothing to charge him with just yet. Anyway, guys, stay tuned. Y'all took me in mad overtime. I need tea because I got a headache. And listen, the reunion is the reunion. We will recap the reunion. But I'm going to cut the reunion recaps off probably at 60 minutes. I can't have you driving me crazy. Charges, Felicia, are only coming. They're only coming. They did this as a shakedown little scare type of thing. Charges are only coming if they find the evidence that they need. So we we haven't seen anything yet. I need to see them bringing boxes and stuff out of the house. If you remember with, uh, what is his name, Art Kelly, when they left his home, they had boxes and crates and crates and boxes and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, guys, I love y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Hit the like button. If you don't even, didn't hit it coming in, hit it going out. I'll see you next time. Good night and goodbye, everybody.